Last time I made a YouTube video, fuck, would have been so long ago. I don't actually, actually, probably a few months. It's about like animation and stuff, as it always is. <laughs> but yeah. Solid. Um, hello, audience. This is my flatmate, Aaron. We've been living together for three months now. Um, yeah, when did you move in? April, ha midway through April. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a minute. All right. It's been a minute. Yeah, and he was like, who's this pack packer kid coming in, like living with the bare essentials, having yeah. a mattress on the floor? He, yeah, he didn't even have a bed frame. And I was like, <laughs> Jesus, this guy's saving money, doing the right things to get whatever he wants. Uh, but he's doing well, yeah. Yeah, I eventually did get a bed frame. So, FYI. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Now his mate's sleeping on the floor instead. But... <laughs> yeah. yeah, but... um. I've inspired, or I like to think I've inspired Aaron to be like, hey, I'm going to start putting money aside for, like, my first solo trip. You've been out of the country before, though, right? Only when I was really young. So, like, it was always with my parents just being dragged around, like, two, three, four years old, stuff I don't even remember. But it was to, like, Germany, Latvia. Went to New Zealand a bunch of family. Went to China a little bit. But nothing that I actually had the initiative for myself to do. So I'm keen to actually change that a little bit this time around. And where are you thinking? Well, you recommended Thailand. I was open to suggestions, but I'm on a budget at the moment. I say budget, but it's really just however much I have. Um, so Asia was like, hey, cheap living expenses, see a bunch of cool stuff in a culture that I don't really know much about. Like, you know, you get cultures that are coming through the media, like Japan, America, all the stuff that I'm familiar with. But Thailand... How much do I know about Thailand, right? <laughs> so I figured, why not? We'll see what happens and go from there. Yeah, solid. Yeah, and I also, I think I was like, oh, like, check flights for India. Because India is just, like, by far the cheapest country I've been to. Mm -hmm. But Thailand's also, like, very cheap to be in. Um, yeah, it also depends if you're going for more vacation or culture. And it seems like your your mindset's more culture Absolutely. and just, like, see something culture, new. Because, yeah. yeah, Bali would be the next destination for, for uh, what's it, vacation. Just because so mm -hmm. many Australians do that. Yeah. It is, like, the most popular. Like, <laughs> like, Australia, Bali is just, like, two and two. You know, you can't separate them. Yeah, it's basically Mexico for U.S., like, Cancun, how people always go there for, like, vacation. Mm. Um, but, yeah, and then what would you say, like, why now? Why at this period of your life? Oh, well, I could say it's, like, I guess it's half defining decade, half personal growth. So for those of you that might be unfamiliar, Defining Decade is a book that really takes you through the steps of what your future is going to be like and how you should take control of it now if you're in like your 20s, 20s to 30s. So I'm thinking, right, got my future ahead of me, yeah, haven't been out of the country properly on like a solo trip or like to experience things. If I start getting into the habit now of looking at places and experiencing things, then when I'm 30, 40, 50, 60, I'll be having that knowledge and backup experience to be like, yeah, fuck it. Why not go on another trip? Mm -hmm. Why not experience this new thing that will help me grow as a person? So there's that part, the defining decade section. Then also just... As an artist, right? Art imitates life, life imitates art. If you go out and about, you pick up things, mm -hmm. right? And even for storytelling, for art, for designing things, you we often take from the world and then apply it to whatever we want. And that creates, you know, some of the most beautiful things you'll ever see in your life. So yeah. it's like, if I get out and about, then I've got more leverage or more encyclopedia, you know, of my brain, of my creativity to use. I think that would just be a perfect opportunity for me. I like, I, I'd really like to go more into that because that's something I like by far like have always known and have agreed with. The life drawing from art and all yeah, that. Yeah, like in terms of like my own work and like design, like, so whenever I was, yeah, so COVID, I was stuck in Miami and mm. that was like my first like paid design gig or intern. It wasn't even paid. That was my first time where I'm like, I'm making a living from designing. And then like, I've always designed, like, super colorfully, like, Miami's very colorful and whatnot. Yeah, you do have that poppy palette that you like to use for your photos and all that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, then immediately as I came to New York for winter, I've noticed, like, I started to use more gray tones. And, like, even seeing the different graffiti around, I take pictures of the graffiti because I'm like, I haven't mm -hmm. seen this stuff in, like, a year and a half. And, like, I went back for, like, a month. And I was still working at that period and I was just like, oh, like, 
let me like draw inspiration more from like the city and i'm like i'm glad i'm getting revitalized from like my original creative energy where i grew up in new york city then i went back to miami and then after that i went to israel for the first time or lived in israel for the first time i went for the second time and i was like oh tel aviv and i i saw my memories from my instagram it said i was like can't wait to draw inspiration from the city and i like that was two years ago now and i was just like and that was my first day i was we were literally stuck in our side of our apartment because it was covid still and like we had to be quarantined but i like literally like looking out the window from the beach and everything i was like can't wait to be inspired by this and like i still have photos of all this art and graffiti from tel aviv um do you recall things that you've done today which draw upon those specific experiences like all oh, this design i definitely pulled from israel or this one i would say i mean that's why like i don't know if i looking back mm-hmm. i can do that but in the moment i'm kind of just like creating yeah okay. so like when i was living in israel basically every day i would go to the beach mm-hmm. and like then from there i like, kind of developed more of a i don't know in my personal style i like to or i guess say it, sometimes it doesn't go into my work sometimes it's just personally like i love wearing muscle tees because that's all you'd wear there basically <laughs> mm. and like people would go to the club in muscle tees and it'd be perfectly really? fine that's why i love israel it's like the most laid-back australia culture would never australia would never that's that's most countries like most yeah. countries if you go in a tank they'll be like put on something like i've literally had friends in clubs in new york and in barcelona and been like you can't come in the club because you're showing shoulders mm. as a guy and um while like you were like, I literally wore shorts and muscle tee. I have one of the muscles. I have a picture of me in the club in this muscle tee. And I have that same one. And it's just like, because they're like, they have a lot less imports. Mm-hmm. So like people, you wear clothes basically until they're dead. And like, also oh, one thing about, valuable, yeah. yeah, like people always think like, oh, Jews, like you're always in a suit. If you're like Hasidic, whatnot. I mean, there are those, mm-hmm. but then if you go to an Israeli wedding, there's no ties in sight. Really? There's no ties, no jackets. Yeah. Muscle tees and shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Like the most formal they'll get for a wedding. Like you have to think that's one of the most formal events. Yeah. The most formal you'll get is like everyone's in a white button down in pants. Huh. And like you open up the top button like. And this is for the whole culture. Just being this relaxed about clothing. And mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. So you're, you're looking at all this fashion and. You so know. like. I, like, very much brought that where I'm like, all right, I don't want to have to dress up everywhere I go. Uh, I still like dressing up. Like, I like, honestly, I, yeah. yeah, my wardrobe I try to have for versatility. Mm-hmm. And when I think versatility, like, honestly, like, what you're wearing now, like a polo shirt yeah, just would be, like, simple. the most versatile thing. Because you could wear that casual or you could wear that, like, in business. And, like, it's versatile. You don't have to really shift up your wardrobe too much. Mm. But, yeah, that's just drawing upon inspiration for my own personal style. Like, I kind of... I almost like like a rattier type style now. Rattier? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to describe it, yeah. I mean, and that's just one place that you've been to compared to, you know, Semester at Sea, Camp America, yeah. all this other stuff. And me, I've still got to get my mileage up. So I figured Thailand's like probably a good place to start. Even then, I'm still considering whether to go by myself and just say, you know, get out there, learn hard and fast how to manage all that stuff. Or whether I still need to like be patient and wait for someone else to drag me along and then it's like managing that organizing oh schedules budget all that here's stuff. a cool thing so will's gonna go back to malaysia for a boxing tournament oh when are we out november-ish okay so yeah that's also like another time where you could go with someone somewhere mm. but like thailand i'd say like southeast asia especially it's, i feel like thailand's kind of like thailand or i haven't been to vietnam for backpacking but thailand for me seems like the central of like southeast asia backpacking okay so like that's the other thing is i can meet all the hostel people and, exa- like, probably other people in hostels will give you tips and sh- and like honestly it's so easy they'll just be like they'll be like hey like do you have any plans for today and you'll be like no and they'll be like oh come with me i'm doing this cool thing mm-hmm. you know like and you could just meet it's so easy to meet people there like like, very so i figure even if i don't go with someone on the way there i'll probably meet people there and then i can organize around that that's that's basically how like one of my friends he went and we met up there and then he we met people in like hostels we were staying in and like now he's traveling around with those and he's been with those people for like two months now because like they just got along very well i mean he started dating one of the girls so it was just like <laughs> locked in yeah he's got the contract he signed <laughs> 
Well, not like officially. He yeah. was just like seeing, you know, seeing this person, getting a hotels room with them. But um, basically, like, like they've been traveling around like two months, hmm. and like he had no plans on being like, oh, I'm gonna meet these people and then follow their itinerary like a, around yeah, there. A specific. Plan. He was just like, oh, I'm gonna book a one way flight, stay in Bangkok, hmm. see my friend Talon, and then after that, it's kind of like see we'll what see what happens. happens. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah got to figure out if that's the habits that i want to get into so i don't know uh look it's probably better if i just fucking do it and see what happens yeah i just got to make sure that i keep myself safe and ensure that i'm not gonna like fuck myself over well that's why like no matter where he's going he's staying in some sort like there's been shelter and stuff like people yeah like people they always make sure like you have enough money and like what most people do for southeast asia and this is what my friend did my other friend adrian did for thailand was he went booked the flight there, spent money, and then he just made sure he always had enough in his bank account to book a flight back. Once he was like, "Oh, we're getting close to like uh, no, the he budget," just gets out. He just gets the flight back, like schedule the week out, gets out. You know. Yeah. Okay. So like a fail uh, proof plan to make sure that you are, you know, going to the right places, seeing the right people, you know, staying away from any trouble, stuff like that. Most people will stay away from trouble, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah perfect yeah like and obviously if someone's like doing something where you're like that's kind of sketchy then you just don't like that go one with guy them that we'll talk about walking around and <laughs> <laughs> well that like wasn't a trower that was just, yeah, a, dude. But, that was um, just a dude but like if there's any father fellow like backpackers who are like oh let's go skydiving today you'll be like i'll just like do my own thing for today yeah. you guys can go do that yeah. obviously like depends on your risk tolerance and if you want to go skydiving but like if people are like, oh, let's do this activity, you'd be like, oh, I'll just do another activity. I'll see you guys back at the hostel. Yeah, just Mitch and matching. Yeah, whatever. exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of what I did was like every hostel I went to, I made different friends there. Hmm. And like I knew my itinerary and wanted to go on my own. Like I never really got locked into anyone. Oh, okay. But like so some people like enjoy, you. some people enjoy getting locked in with people, you know? Mm-hmm. And like you might find that there's a phase where it's like your first two weeks there, you're like, I'm just going to like hang out with these two people because we get along. And then eventually, one of them actually might be at the end of their trip, you know, and they'll be like, oh, I'm actually heading home in a week. And then you'll be like, all right, from there, I'll do my own thing, you oh, know? Okay. See, this is all the stuff that I need to learn, and I'm just picking up tips slowly from talent. But eventually, I'll be able to apply it. <laughs> if you want to pick up more tips, shameless plug at Escape Your, ho- <laughs> at Escape Your Hometown on Instagram. Link below. <laughs> Check it out, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you want to, like, just get more like travel tips whatnot feel free to message me at talon.in.color message me here on youtube leave a comment yeah he's Um, always open to stuff and we'll help you out if you have any questions yeah um do you want to plug in your own youtube channel yeah it's pretty small we're getting there it's all like animation content for 2d stuff uh it's called zone astra or zone underscore astra is the handle you can find it's got a green logo uh if you want to check it out other than that do you have any closing thoughts um like comment subscribe i usually have my one little outro saying so do you have any other closing thoughts not really i hope you had a good time (laughs) hope the video was informative and we'll see you later yeah uh continue exploring and hope you have an epic day